Bit Perry here with Thad, and uh, we are about to give you a non-spoiler review of Bohemian Rhapsody. Of course, the movie about Queen, specifically Freddie Mercury, in this case played by Mr. Robot's Rami Malek. So, Thad, you're here, and you came yes, with me to the screening because you're a big uh, Queen fan, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very, very big Queen fan since a very early age, and uh, I was really, I've been excited for this movie to come out for a very long time. It's been through a lot of changes over the last few years. We finally got the movie, and I think they did a really good job with it. Yeah, um, you you already know because we walked out of the theater <laughs> together. I, I loved this movie, and yeah. I think at this point in time, I'm pretty confident in calling it my favorite movie of the year. Wow. And I, I was really surprised because, you know, of course I'm a Queen fan where I've sure. listened to their music before, but this was not a movie that I was counting down to seeing, sure. and I was that yeah. excited about it, but I walked out overwhelmed kind of by how emotionally moved I was. I would say for the majority of the third act of the film, I was on the verge of tears and then I saw, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but I saw one particular image that just really kind of broke me and the <laughs> second that happened, you know you can't really stop crying and yeah. that's kind of what happened until I got up and composed myself and walked out. I didn't realize you were crying next yeah. to me the entire time. I was... I'm glad I hit it well. <laughs> yeah, I was captivated by what they were doing on screen. I thought that Rami Malek does a a life-changing turn as Freddie Mercury. I think his career will never be the same after this role. Uh, I think that he instantly catapulted himself from TV star to movie star mm -hmm. with this performance. But I also think that the supporting cast, the people that played the other band members, uh, Brian May and Roger Taylor mm -hmm. specifically, uh, they th those actors will definitely be popping up in a number of films coming forward because I thought they all did a very good job supporting the story of Freddie Mercury while also giving uh, a very good window into the history of Queen the band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have to echo everything you just said. And for the most part, I was very impressed by how well woven the supporting characters are in this story where you really do get a powerful piece about Freddie Mercury, yeah. but you never shortchange all the people around him. And it's right. just this idea of Freddie Mercury's effect on all of them and his decisions, but also just this general idea of how music can change someone's life. Change it from the artist's perspective, from an individual perspective, and then you really get a full blast at seeing how it can affect many people out there. And I think that's where the emotional element came in for me. But just to highlight another supporting performance here that you should keep an eye on is Lucy Boynton, who yes. plays uh, who plays his... Uh, his wife in the film. Yes, yes, his long time, his long time companion, uh, who was with him from before he became a rock star all the way to his death. Mm -hmm. uh, she does a wonderful performance. I didn't even realize yeah. who the actress was until after the fact. Yeah, that it's she's the, from Sing Street. The girl from Sing Street, who <laughs> I fell in love with watching Sing Street, yeah. and I didn't even recognize her in this film. I, I think they all put together really strong performances. There's, there's two supporting actors that I didn't really love and I think okay. it had more to do with the writing of their characters. Who are they? Uh, Mike Myers ah, delivers yes, yes. a career worst performance. I think this is worse than the love guru in this per he, unnecessary, unnecessary uh, fictional character that they bring in to just kind of be the angry record executive. They, they make it sound like they fired EMI after their second or third record when they were really with them until well after Freddie Mercury's death. And I don't understand why this character exists. I don't care what the reasoning was. It was like he was winking to the camera because of his relationship with the song Bohemian Rhapsody in Wayne's World. Unnecessary, completely pulled me out of the film. I don't know whose decision it was to bring him in. Bad call. Okay. That that one didn't have that same exact effect on me, but <laughs> I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. He. He didn't really necessarily change the game. It felt like he was there to push the story as it's yeah. presented in the movie in a certain direction. So I see why they needed it. But if I'm being completely honest, I didn't even realize that was him until after the fact. Well, there you go. Well, then that says something about his makeup. I I, <laughs> I recognized his uh, So I Married an Axe Murderer yeah, yeah. slash uh, Austin Powers Scottish brogue pretty quickly and and realized that he was who, just... Who was the other one you were talking oh, about? Oh, the other one I think was the uh, the, the villainous character okay. uh, in the film that I, I didn't really love the writing of the character. I don't want to give away too much as yeah. to who that character was, but I just, I thought he was a little, a little poorly formed as a, 
as a character that was so central to Freddy's life. Okay, I see that. That's the point that I'll definitely agree yeah. on. That was actually, I think, one of the the only major flaws I saw in the movie, or not even necessarily a flaw where it took away that much, but I think there could have been a little more, I guess, meat and believability to that situation. Yeah. I didn't quite uh, feel why Freddie Mercury would align himself quite that way with him. I don't think the, the emotional uh, value was there right. enough to convince me that he would actually do that, sure. at least in the context of this movie. So I wish yeah. they had beefed that up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like, and I felt like they did a really good job of crafting the story and bringing enough realistic, true life benchmarks of the band. Uh, they ch- Obviously, they changed some stuff for the dramatic elements of the film, but I think that they stayed true to the history of all of the people involved, uh, which I always appreciate in a yeah. historical drama. I think that it's hard with a music biopic, especially when members of the band are still alive. Uh, Roger May and, uh, or uh, Brian May and Roger Taylor uh, are still alive. They were music producers on the movie. I'm sure they might have helped shape some of the stories because obviously we, cameras were not present in every band meeting. Uh, but I think that they stayed true to the essence of the film or the essence of the band and and Freddie's life, and they didn't shave away too many of the uh, unsavory aspects of his uh, of his rise to fame, mm-hmm. uh, which I appreciated. Yeah, um, you ready for scores? Sure. You, what, you, yeah, I know you want with, me to go first. You go so, first. I've been thinking about this a lot okay. because I walked out of that movie just completely rocked to the core and. I know I'm very precious about my grades. I'm very yeah. precious in particular about my peak grade, which is an A, not an A+, plus. it's an A. And even though I do see certain flaws in this movie where I wish they had, you know, for, the, for example, yeah. that relationship, I wish they had added a little more to it or there would have been something a little more convincing behind it that I could feel, but... Given the way that I felt when I walked out of this movie, I think I have to just go for it on this one, and I have to give Bohemian Rhapsody an A. I, wow. I haven't stopped thinking about it, and okay. I, I just walked out just like with the wind completely knocked out of me, and just the idea of kind of what I was hinting at before, too, the idea of feeling the power and the importance of music and how it can drive someone who's so, who's so passionate about it to build this career for himself and his band and, and all together as well. But see the driving force behind Freddie Mercury, see the effect that Queen's music had on so many people out there, which I think this movie does especially well, yeah. and just get a real taste of the, um, the wild emotional journey that they all went on together. Mm-hmm. I mean, this movie to me represents the, the power of art, whether you're talking about movies or music or anything out there, just really how important and how life-changing it can be to people. And that idea just completely bowled me over. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I would go, I, I think I'd probably go a B plus uh, on this. Uh, there, there were the, some of the supporting character stories were not as fleshed out as I wanted them to be, but uh, the band was great. The uh, Willem, uh, Willem Lee, is that the guy's name that plays Brian May? Uh, it was fantastic. I don't know how to pronounce I his name and I need to learn. A silent G, I think, yeah. at the beginning of it. I think that's how you, we should get, we should ask Jack. Yeah. He probably knows. Probably. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but I thought he was incredible as Brian. Uh, Rami, again, I'm, he will definitely get an Oscar nomination. I don't know if he's poised to win this, uh, but I think that everyone will be talking about him for many years to come. And despite all of the problems this film had in development, uh, both story, production, mm-hmm. multiple directors, yeah. uh, Brian Singer getting fired, Dexter Fletcher coming back after walking away from the project to finish the film. There is, to quote the band, one vision. And this mo- this band uh, is properly encapsulated in this movie. And I think if you're a fan of Queen or a fan of music or just interested in the story of how this band became to be, uh, became such a driving force in the culture, it's a really good watch, and uh, I, I recommend it to everybody. I have not stopped listening to Queen music after. So it's, even though I was a casual listener before, yeah. I think if you're not necessarily a big fan, this movie could have the power to change it. And I definitely think it's going to drive a lot of people out there who haven't seen the Live Aid footage to actually go. Because that's yeah. the first thing that I Googled when I got home is I watched the whole thing. Yeah. So there you guys go. Those are our thoughts on Bohemian Rhapsody. Now you know what we like you to do. Hit that comment section below. Are you looking 
forward to the movie. If and when you see it, share your thoughts right there. And as always, don't forget to like and share this review. We'll see you soon with even more of them.